creating a crater in the region of Negev. And then uh, right after Mitzpiramon or Roman Crater, we will continue our journey to Alpaca Farm. This is one of a kind in Israel. These animals is not uh, natural. They are not native in the land of Israel. These animals are imported and they produce one of the best uh, uh, four. I don't know if tama yung pagkakapronounce ko. Four, if you are. Fur. Yon, fur. <laughs> Yun pala, fur. Kasi hindi natin laging ginagamit. We're not using all the time this word, fur. <laughs> the word of the day, fur. So, better than the F-U-R. Uh, better than the, uh, ito yung fur of the lamb. <laughs> and then, uh, after that, after Alpaca Farm, we will continue our journey to uh, of that national uh, park this this uh, of that is different from Ain of that okay so this one this is more on historical it's basically way back in the time of Nabataeans and also Ain of that this is an oasis in the heart of the wilderness and also way back in the time of Nabataeans and then we will have a time to visit the tomb of Ben Gurion uh -huh. Overlooking the Valley of Zin, which is one of the famous uh, places that was mentioned in the wilderness wandering of the Israelites. So this will be our journey today, and I need your cooperation okay. to finish the job today. Amen. All right. So thank you. Uh, the name of our driver is Walid. Okay, Walid Bukherdov. Oh, uh, let's give him a, a hand of applause. Okay, Walid Bukherdov. <laughs> For a safe and wonderful journey, your hunting driver. And of course, yours truly, ang ganyong uh, lakwacherong pastor in the land of Israel, Pastor Aris of Christ Road Church. And we have also Sister Rona as our assistant tour leader today. So for now, that's all. Thank you so much. And God bless you all. See you in Mitzpiramon. Live.
Now, uh, this is the largest uh, soil erosion in the whole world. Mm -hmm. So, would you imagine yung area na yan? So, this is caused by erosion and this area is around 30 to 35 kilometers. So, ganyan kalaki yung erosion na yan dito. Kapag sinabi natin erosion, ito yung pagguho ng lupa. So, it might be in the uh, years before, na pantay lang din yung yung lupa dito ano walang uh, walang uh, bali na nandiyan sa baba pero sabi nila dahil sa geo geological movement na nangyari dito so nagkaroon ng crack and naging dahil ay kung bakit bumaba yung lupa dito sa area nito so that's around 30 to 35 kilometers so this is the biggest in the world and because of this view they consider this place as the Grand Canyon of the Southern Israel so kasi kapag pag, uh, narinig nyo sa itang Grand Canyon, normally yun yung uh, nature park in America. Nakalimutan ko lang Arizona. Arizona, yun. Yun yung pinaka-particular area. Now, so karamihan na pupunta rito, they just go for the view only. But if you want to learn more, especially concerning the biblical history, merong biblical significance yung area na ito because this is known as the wilderness of Paran in the Old Testament time. So take note, the wilderness of Paran and what is the first biblical significance of the wilderness of Paran? We can see that in the book of Genesis chapter 21. And this is the story of the brother, half-brother of Isaac. Siguro pamilya kayo kay Isaac. Diba? And familiar din kayo kay Ishmael. Okay? So si Ishmael, according sa pag-aaral, siya ang pinagmula ng lahing Arabs o yung uh, mga nasa Saudi and basically yun ay mga uh, Muslims. So ito yung story mga kapatid. Now from Beersheba, kung nakarating na kayo ng Beersheba, nadaanan natin kanina. So yan yung isa sa pinaka hometown ni Abraham nung siya ay napunta dito sa land of Canaan or the land of promise. And then later on, fast forward tayo, magka, uh, ano to, hindi magkaanak si Sarah. Kaya ang ginawa ni Sarah, mga kapatid, sabi niya kay Abraham, sipingan mo yung aking alipin, si Hagar. Aba, tuwang-tuwa naman si Abraham, sinipingan si Hagar. So sa madaling salita, nagbuntis niya si Hagar, okay? So ngayon, uh, akala ni Sarah, magiging okay yung lahat. Pero nagkaroon siya ng jealousy. Dito kay Hagar, dahil nagkaroon ng anak, samantalang siya, Siya talaga yung asawa, wala naman siyang anak. And then, later on mga kapatid, dininig ng Diyos ang prayer ni Sarah. And at the same time, tinupad ng Diyos yung kanyang pangako na dadami ang salinay ni Abraham. So, ano nangyari? Nagbuntis ngayon si Sarah sa edad na around 90 years old. So, imagine si Sarah, nagkaanak sa ganong edad. Meron pa kayong chance? <laughs> may chance pa kayo. Mga senior citizen, may chance pa kayo. There is miracle. <laughs> Alright. So ngayon, ngayon mga kapatid, ano nangyari? So nagkaroon ng conflict kasi lagi nag-aaway si Ishmael at saka si, si Isaac. Eh ganun naman yung mga bata. Pero ang nangyari, kinausap ni Sarah si Abraham at sabi niya, paalisin mo si si Ismail at saka yung kanyang ina na si Hagar doon sa, sa Beersheba at hindi na nila ito maging kasama. So masakit man sa kaluban ni Abraham pero pinalis niya si Isaac and at the same time, ang Diyos na rin mismo ang nagsabi kay Abraham na sige, let go muna si Hagar at si Isaac. So saan natin makita yung kasaysayan na yan? In the book of Genesis chapter 21. Okay, Genesis chapter 21. Now, let me read to you verse 17 para short ka tayo. Sabi rito, And God heard the voice of the lad, that's Ishmael, yung bata, and the angel of God called to Hagar out of heaven and said unto her, What aileth thee, Hagar? Fear not, for God hath heard the voice of the lad where he is. Kasi bata pa si Ishmael, umiiyak siya. So narinig ng Diyos yung panagoy yung pagyak ni Ishmael. Arise, leave up the lad, and hold him in thine hand, for I will make him a great nation. Take note, Amen. despite of the fact that Hagar is not a legitimate wife of Abraham, but because 
uh, but because God made a promise to Abraham to make him a great nation and his descendants, kaya pati itong si Ismael, nadamay siya doon sa pangako ng Diyos na mapagpapala din siya. Kasi sa, sa haran pa lang sinabi ng Diyos, I will make you a great nation. So, since anak ni Abraham si Ismael, ayun, he became great also. No wonder yung, yung Saudi Arabia, yung mga Arabs, mga kapatid sa area na ito, they were also rich or wealthy. Imagine yung Dubai, mga kapatid. Yung UAE. Grabe yung mga pansang ito. So, I will make him a great nation. And then verse 19, And God opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water, and she went and filled the bottle with water, and gave the lad drink. And God was with the lad, and he grew, and dwelt in the wilderness, and became an archer. So, ito na. Naniraan daw sa wilderness itong si uh, si Ishmael, yung lad, hindi kasi binabagit yung pangalan niya. And then he grew up in the wilderness and he became an archer. So ano ba usually ang pinapana dito sa area neto? Marami dito mga ibex mga kapatid sa area neto. Okay? And finally, in verse 21, sabi dito, And he dwelt in the wilderness of Paran. Okay, try that. In the wilderness of Paran, and his mother took him a wife out of the land of Egypt. So take note the word wilderness of Paran. So when you study the geography of the land of Israel, so the, the map will point you out in this very place, this is the wilderness of Paran. Now, somewhere here, I don't know exactly, nobody, nobody knows exactly where in this area, Ismail lived and had his wife from Egypt. And by the way, in the ancient time, before it became the land of the Israelites, this area is part of the land of Egypt. Okay? So ngayon mga kapatid, ito yung area kung saan lumaki at namirahan si Ismail. Are we clear about the wilderness of Paran? Okay, so that's the first biblical significance. And then secondly, mga kapatid, another biblical significance of this wilderness, it is related in the history of the Israelites when they journey, journeyed from Sinai going here in the land of promise. So from Sinai, this became a historical uh, area of their journey where, can, where we can see that in the book of Numbers chapter 10. Okay, book of Numbers chapter 10. Let me read to you. Numbers chapter 10, verse 11 and 12. Oh, listen dito mga kapatid. Oh, sabi dito. And it came to pass on the 20th day of the second month. So, pang two months nila mula sa Mount Sinai. Okay, 21 days. Sabi dito. In the second year. Okay, second year na rin. That the cloud was taken up from of the tabernacle of the testimony and the children of Israel took their journeys out of the wilderness of Sinai and the cloud rested in the wilderness of Paran. So the cloud of the Lord rested here in the wilderness of Paran. So what is that cloud? When you study the Bible here in the book of Numbers, God provided the Israelites two pillars. The pillars of clouds in the daytime and the pillar of fire on the nighttime. So on the day, especially on the summer day, they really need the pillar of clouds to give them shade. Kasi napakainit dito. Siguro alam nyo naman kung gaano kainit dito kapag the summer season. Tama? Tel Aviv pa lang, mainit na. Now, how much more dito sa area na ito? This is wilderness. So, napakainit dito mga kapatid. And then, on the winter days, they badly need the, the fire. Kasi ito yung magbibigay ng warm sa kanila, ng init sa kanila. So, kaya sa gabi, kanina nga lang, nilalamig tayo. Ngayon, nilalamig pa rin tayo. Now, how much more in the month of, of January and February? Super lamig mga kapatid dito. At wala pa silang mga jacket, katulad ng jacket na meron tayo. Kaya it's not easy. So that's the reason why God provided them these pillars. 
And the clouds, the clouds, the pillar of clouds rested upon this area of wilderness of Paran. At kapag sa nuhuminto yung pillar of clouds, they set up the tabernacle. Have you been in Timna Park? Mm -hmm. Any yeah. lot? Yeah. Have you been in the uh, the replica of tabernacle? Yeah. Yeah. So kung saan yung clouds mag rest, so doon nila isi-set up yung tabernacle because the clouds, the presence of God will stay there in tabernacle and then all the Israelites, let's say this is the tabernacle and then all the Israelites, they will come around the tabernacle. And how many people are they during those times of their journey? Around 1,200,000 up to 2 million. So ganun karami yung, yung ginayad ni Moses from Sinai. No wonder kailangan nila yung ganitong area na malawak para sa kanilang pag-travel sa kanilang camp. Alright? So clear na tayo. That's the second story. And then finally mga kapatid, ito naman. Okay? So yan, uh, Book of Numbers chapter 12. Okay? Book of Numbers chapter 12. Uh, from here in wilderness of Paran, um, God instructed Moses to choose 12 spies who will survey the land of Canaan. So I don't know if you're familiar with the story. So that was the time na kinakailangan ma-survey itong land of Canaan kung paano nila itong papasukin. So chapter 12 and then verse 16, sabi dito, And afterward, the people removed from Hazeroth and pits in the wilderness of Paran. So here we are in wilderness of Paran. And then chapter 13, verse 1 to 3. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Send thou men that they may search the land of Canaan, which I gave unto the children of Israel, of every tribe of their fathers, shall ye send a man, every one, a ruler among them. So this is why we have the story of the 12 spies in the Old Testament. Okay, so one spy from each tribe and they have to enter the land of the Canaanites to survey it so that they could give a report to Moses and they will know how to conquer the land of Canaan. Why? Because this is the promised land of God to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. From Egypt, they have to go back here in the land of Canaan because there is no other land God promised to the Israelites except this land of the Canaanites. And then verse 3, And Moses, by the commandment of the Lord, sent, from, sent them from the wilderness of Paran. All those men were heads of the children of Israel. So, the 12 spies, they started from the wilderness of Paran, entering the land of Canaan to survey it, mga kapatid. And you know what? We have... 10 spies who told them the negative report. That's why the Israelites keeps on murmuring and they wanted to go back in Egypt. And the Israelites said, it's better for us to go back in Egypt and die there instead of dying here in the wilderness. Okay? Tapos gusto na nilang batuin si Moses, si Joshua, at si Caleb. So nakita nyo talaga kung gano'n sila ka-stubborn. Old Testament pa lang, huwag niyo kong sumbunga. <laughs> okay? But but that's that's in history. They keep on murmuring to their leaders. And then, so 10 negative reports. Pinakamatindi doon mga kapatid ang sabi nila, we are just like grasshoppers in their sights and they are giants in the land. So masyado nilang minaliit yung kanilang sarili. They forgot what God has done in the land of Egypt. Alam mo, kung babalikan lang nila yung ginawa ng Diyos while they are in Egypt, they will never doubt in conquering the land of Canaan. Back it. Because in Egypt, before they live, there was the so-called ten plagues. Sampung salot na binigay ng Diyos para turuan ng leksyon ang mga Egyptians at turuan ng leksyon si Pharaoh and most of all, ten plagues to prove the Egypt, to prove to the Egyptians and to prove to the Israelites that their God is the almighty, powerful, awesome God. But they never remember that thing na ginawa ng Diyos. Not, not only that. Hindi sana, si, hindi sana lang maisip na tipaklong lang tayo at malalaki sila at hindi natin sila kayang labanan. If they could remember what God had done in the Red Sea. Alam yung ginawa ng Diyos? Inaas ni Moses yung tungkod at anong ginawa ng Diyos? Sinati yung Red Sea and they walk in the dry land. No makatawid na silang lahat, sumunod yung mga Egyptians pa di si Pharaoh, Bumalik yung tubig at namatay yung mga Egyptians. So, 
if they could only remember those stories before they arrived here. And finally, nung sila ay nasa ano mga kapatid, nung nakipaglaban sa mga Amalekites, every time na tinataas ni Moses yung kanyang tungkod, natatalo yung mga Amalekites. Pag ay binaba yung tungkod, nadadaig sila. So, dito makikita natin how the Lord showcase His power. But they tend to forget everything that the Lord has done. Kaya ano nangyari? If you don't see God bigger in your life, if you don't see the histories na pinatunayan ng Diyos ang kanyang kapangyarihan, you will always be negative, you will always doubt. Katulad ng mga swilets. Pero kapag alam mo kung sino ang Diyos at kung ano yung kaya niyang gawin, you will always see positivity and victory in every challenges na yung harap sa buhay. So kaya dapat ganun lang tayo. Let us always look back in God. Let us always magnify Him. And let us always learn from the history of the past, mga kapatid. And how big He is. Yes. Because God is great. God he is, is awesome. And He can deliver us from anything. Amen. So this is the story of wilderness of Aaron. Ismael, the pillar of cloud, and the twelve spies sent to the land of Canaan. So, uh, did we learn something today, mga kapatid? Yes. O oh, yan, mas outhog. <laughs> Hindi lahat na nagtitrip dito, alam yung kasaysayan na yan. Believe me. Okay? Amen.